Hello, YouTube. Hello, everyone. Hello, nypf.org slash live. Uh, I see people are already joining us, which is very exciting. I'm uh, happy to see all sorts of names here. Um, it's wonderful to have you with us. We'll be starting in a few minutes. Aleichem Sholem. Somebody has written to me, Sholem Aleichem. So, of course, Aleichem Sholem and uh, Shainam Dang for coming. Uh, to all of you who are showing up right now. This is, um, we won't begin just yet. It'll be a few minutes before we do. We, the event begins at 7.30. And even at 7.30, of course, people like to trickle into events. So we'll probably start a few minutes after 7.30, but not too many minutes after, probably about five after. We'll start with the actual questions because we like people to get situated, feel comfortable, get ready to answer some, some trivia to puzzle the mind and to delight the heart and to make you laugh maybe and to make you think to yourself, I wasn't born in 1850. I don't know the answer to this question, but you know, um, we do what we can and you'll answer as best you can and hopefully have a good time. As you say in Yiddish, a good time. <laughs> so, looks like we have someone here from Australia. Someone's written hi from down under, which that's, that's exciting. I don't know what time it is down there, but definitely not 7.30 p.m. What time is it down there? Hello from Canada. Hello back to you. Um, my, um, my Bobe grew up in Canada, in Windsor, Ontario, not far where I am right now in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, Hello to you, Denver. Hello to you, Cleveland, Vancouver. Very exciting. And I've just received word what time it is in Australia. That could be the first trivia question. Um, what time is it where this participant is in Australia? And that would be 9.30 a.m. Thursday. So good morning. Hello, Miami. Hello, DC. Melbourne. The person is in Melbourne. Hello, Brooklyn. That's, uh, that's nearer to my usual spot. But right now I'm with Tate Mami in Detroit. Um, hello, DC. All sorts of good folks. Syracuse, New York. What fun that we can meet as a gathering of people interested in Yiddish culture from all over the world in one place. Um, I think that's really lovely, you know, one of a nice thing um, for this time that it's um, sort of connecting people in that way. Um, glad to be connected to all of you here. And in a few minutes we'll begin, we'll begin our trivia. Um, I'm really excited. You could tell <laughs> I'm holding it all in, but I am indeed very excited. I, I'll just have to imagine all of you. I won't really be able to, um, you know, all of you won't be on mic and camera generally, but you can chat things to us. Um, you can send messages to all panelists and they'll go to me and to, uh, the NYTF staff who are wonderfully helping me with this event, Gia Pache and Tony Brown. But we'll get, we'll get into that in a few minutes, the exact rules, how this will go. Um, 
in a few minutes, around 7.35, we've decided. We hope uh, most of our people will be here by then. I hope you've got some good snacks and drinks to feed the mind and prepare to answer these toughies. Um, there are a few toughies, a few easies, and lots of love in between. As you can see on the bow tie, got little little herzlich, little hearts. Yeah. A heart is a heart, and a herzl is a little heart. So Theodore Herzl, a famous dude, Theodore precious little heart. Who knew? And then an, a herzele is even smaller. Um, someone's writing something, excuse me, as I go close to read. Uh, a bit, bit nearsighted. Um, yes, this person, a, uh, a dear friends, Jordan and Corbin have just written um, We have all of the little snacks we need, dear boy. I'm the dear boy, but they're all, they are dear to me as are all of you. The prizes, let's talk about the prizes. And also so you know, I'll get into this when I talk about the rules, but um, if it's an answer to a question, better to type in Latin characters rather than Yiddish characters, because then um, my, the people helping me won't necessarily be able to read uh, if you type in Yiddish characters, but if you type just a little message and, you know, not an answer, you can type that however you like. Um, so yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about the prizes. There's going to be, there will be three winners. And each of the winners gets a distinct prize. First place, really special prize, is a special requested song. You request a song and our artistic director, Zalman Malotek, will perform it at his Thursday Living Room concert. So if you've been tuning into those, Zalman has been entertaining us with a lot of wonderful music from his living room. And you can request a Yiddish song and I'll sing it for you. So that's, of course, the grand prize. Uh, second prize, equally wonderful, is our series from Volksbina Associate Artistic Director, Motl Didner, who does a 15 minute Yiddish every week, uh, where he teaches you Yiddish and entertains you, and it's a barrel of laughs, and you can get a cameo on that series um, if you place second. And then third prize, really wonderful, uh, Sabina Bruckner, who works with the National Yiddish Theater folks, being a literary manager, has in her possession some Fiddler auf dem Dach, Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish CDs, and she will send you a Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish CD featuring all sorts of wonderful people from the folks being a cast of Fiddler, including uh, Lil Omi, and you'll have lots of fun with that, I think. So just, just one more minute, unless my um, fellow, fellow panelists tell me otherwise, one more minute and then we'll kind of start officially introducing and telling you the rules and getting underway. Whenever you're ready. Okay, let's do it. Uh, so, let me just. All right. So, welcome to those of you who have joined us today, whether you're playing along here on Zoom or you're just watching from nytf.org slash live or YouTube, wherever you may be, we're glad that you're here. And the name of this event, this show is Vosver Vu 
the great Yiddish theater quiz, where we ask you the who, the what, and the where of Yiddish theater. I'm your host, Michal Yashinsky, presenting this quiz for the National Yiddish Theater Volksbühne here from uh, the Brooklyn Bridge, as seen in a postcard from the 1930s. Uh, in, in actuality, I'm in Michigan, but it certainly looks like the Brooklyn Bridge is behind me. Ruchim Boim to all of you, welcome to you all. The rules for this great Yiddish theater quiz. First of all, no looking things up. Uh, it just, it makes it less fun. And we don't want you to be naughty and look things up or do be naughty, but um, don't cheat on this game. Rely on your own seichel, your own brains. The format is based, if anyone has seen this show on the British quiz show, University Challenge, that's a show I like. There will be toss-ups and follow, following the toss-ups, there will be bonuses for the first person who got the question right. So the, there will be 15 toss-ups open to anyone. And then after each toss-up, if you've answered it right first, I'll invite you then to answer some bonus questions. And those bonus questions will only be for the person who has answered the toss up correctly. Only provide one guess for each toss up. Uh, you can guess as early as you like while I'm reading the questions, but once you've guessed on a toss up, don't guess again, just guess once. Um, 10 points will be awarded to the first three people who get a toss up correctly, the first three people then only the first, person to, the first person to answer correctly gets invited to the bonus questions. The bonus questions are five points each and only that person who is first to answer may answer the bonuses. We'll invite you to go on mic. Uh, one of the people helping me will send you an invite to turn your mic on and I'll be able to communicate the bonuses directly to you and you'll be able to answer and everyone will hear our little conversation. If the mic doesn't work, you can always just type the answer in the box as everyone will be doing for the toss-ups. Um, once those bonuses are completed, it's back to another toss-up open to anyone. Um, when you answer a toss-up, you'll be answering in the chat. So just type your answer in the chat and make sure it's going to all panelists. That way, not only I will be able to see it, but everyone who is helping will be able to see it. Me, Gia, Tony, we'll all be able to see because we're all monitoring these scores and who gets things right and everything. So send your answers to all panelists for a toss up. Last names are enough. If, you know, if, 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 uh, if say it's, they, they say the answer is Michal Yashinsky, which is my name, it, I'm not going to be an answer. But all you need to write is Yashinsky. Um, but feel free to write the first names of people too. Spelling is always variable when it comes to Yiddish words transcribed in Latin characters. So there will be some leeway there as long as it's close enough and I understand, um, then you'll get it. Um, you may answer either in Yiddish or in English. Say if the play is called Grine Felder, you can say Grine Felder as the answer or you can say Greenfields. But do type in Latin characters that way all of us will understand, even those who do not read Yiddish characters. Prizes I've already talked about, but just quickly, first prize, request a song from Zalman Molotek and I'll sing it at his living room concert that he gives on Thursdays. Second prize, cameo guest appearance on Motel Dinner's 15 Minute Yiddish. Third prize, the album of Fiddler auf dem Dach. What could be cooler? So for the, now the game, who's ready? Who's ready for the game? I can feel that you're ready. I can't see you or hear you, but I feel in my heart and on the little hearts that are on my tie that you're ready. Very good. Type your answer, just one answer, a person, a team in the chat when you've got it. Type it to all panelists. Here we go. In the first act of the play in which she is a central figure, she enters a decaying wooden synagogue at nighttime, accompanied by her elderly nursemaid. There she sees a passionate young scholar calling to her with his eyes. After the youth's death at the end of the act, his spirit takes hold of her body and she spends the rest of the play possessed, speaking in an unearthly voice. 
For 10 points, who is this beleaguered heroine of Ansky's supernatural drama, The Dybbuk, who shares her name with a biblical matriarch, the first wife of Jacob? Okay. Loving these answers. Okay, so the first one to answer correctly was Miriam Isaacs. Miriam Isaacs, very well done. The I'm, I'm receiving I'm receiving two different names from from my fellow panelists as to who was first. Which was it? Um, okay. All right. The answer is Leia. I, the thing is, um, okay. I was receiving different different answers on who came in first. It was not Miriam Isaacs, as reported previously. Uh, that was sent an error. It was actually uh, Beatrice Lang. Beatrice Lang was the first to answer with Leia. Leia is the correct answer, the protagonist of the Dybbuk. So thank you to both of you. You'll both get 10 points for that, but Beatrice is the one who's invited to answer the bonuses. So Beatrice, can we unmute Beatrice? Beatrice, are you there? Ich bin da, das ist Bruche. Oh, hello, Broche. Wonderful that you're here. Wonderful to hear your voice. Uh, here are your bonuses. For five points each, name these colors associated with the Yiddish theater. Leia's iconic costume is a dress of what color? White. White, that's right. She's wearing a wedding dress for a lot of the play. Five points to you for that. This color name has been in the title of two Folkspina productions over the last five years. Green. No, that's gold. The Golden Bride, uh, the Golden uh, Nicola, uh, and America the Golden Land. <sighs> In one famous Yiddish song, the speaker describes his cousin, a new immigrant, by this color. Green. The green that cuisine. one's green. That <laughs> one's green, the green cuisine. Thank you very much, Broche. You get 10 points for the bonuses and 10 points for getting it right. Getting the toss up right. All right. <laughs> Very good, thank you. On to another toss up. All right. Okay, here we are, toss up number two. Identify the person referenced in the blanks in this account by a Yiddish actress. Person in the blanks. I was led into a room where there sat a handsome, well-fed man. My friend introduced him to me. This is blank. Blank noticed I was terrified and said to me, don't be afraid, dear girl. Sit a while and rest, then you'll sing something for me. Blank went to the piano and struck a couple chords. Sing something that you know, he instructed. My friend piped up. Sing the first chorus from Shulamis. For 10 points, name this writer of Shulamis and the Sorceress, considered the father of the Yiddish theater. Okay, we're getting a lot of uh, correct answers of Avram Goldfaden, and that's the correct answer. Uh, the first to get it right is Jordan. Jordan, come on down and let's play. Let's get those bonuses. Jordan. Once I see you up there, Jordan, can you hear me? Yes, we're here. Okay, Jordan, can you hear me? Jordan, can you <laughs> see me? Okay, uh, Jordan and Corbin, I yes. believe. Um, so your, your bonuses, Jordan and Corbin. For five points each, name these gold fodden works by their plots. As you can see, the bonuses will always be related to the Tassa. Carolina, the daughter of a wealthy Chassid, prefers to marry the secular Max over the match her father has made for her with his cousin, a stuttering Talmudic scholar who is her beloved's spitting image. Mavais Nate. You don't know. The answer is the two Kuni Lemels, the Tzvei Kuni Lemel. Ah. They look exactly alike. Um, therefore, there's two of them. Um, a Jewish revolt is raised against the Roman Empire. Bar Kokhba? 
Bar Kokhba is correct. Yes, Bar Kokhba. Um, all right, another, uh, that's an operetta historic kind of operetta by Goldfun. Third and final bonus, a Jewish man of medicine is the only one in 14th century Palermo who can heal Elvira, the sickly daughter of the local governor, Don Pedro, despite the fact that the Jews have been banished from the city by royal writ. Zans Michael, Reb Kribmeister. Uh, there, you, don't, you don't have to be sorry at all. I'm just happy you're here. Uh, but the answer is Dr. Almasaro or the Jews of Palermo. In the Miguel. <laughs> so um, see you back out there, uh, Jordan and Corbin. On to another toss up. This is fun, eh? I'm having fun. This anyone can answer, and remember to answer to all panelists in the chat. In its original location, there now stands a Chase Bank. New locations now operate in the Manhattan neighborhoods of Murray Hill and the Upper East Side, but neither are on the original thoroughfare for which the institution was named. For 10 points, name this kosher delicatessen, once famous for its back room decorated with Yiddish theatrical posters, including many featuring the great comedian of Yiddish theater, Molly Pekan. All right, so I'm being told by one of my fellow moderators that Debbie Berman, Debbie Berman is the first to answer that correctly as Second Avenue Deli. That's the Second Avenue Deli, which is no longer on Second Avenue, unfortunately. So Debbie Berman, are you there? We are here, Mark and Debbie Berman. Mark and Debbie, lovely. My mother is named Debbie. She's watching too, but she's not playing because, you know, I've been chatting about questions in the house, of course, so that wouldn't be right. But um, I'm glad that Debbie Berman is here playing and Mark Berman. Here are your bonuses. I hope you're hungry because I now want you to answer these questions related to Molly Pecan and food. Molly references what other famous Lower East Side eatery in her song, Die ganze Welt is a Theater? Either Ratanus or Katzen's. What is your final answer, Debbie? Katz's? Uh, no, unfortunately, neither of them were right. It's oh. one of Schimmel's knishes. Oh. <laughs> she says, uh, this is, she does the voice of a person in the audience at one of her shows, and she's, it's a little boy, and he says, Oi, mommy, what do you say? You think she's delicious? Ah, she isn't as good as going to Schimmel's knishes. <laughs> anyway, here's your second one, another about Molly Pecan and food. Molly as Mamele in the Yiddish film of that name is too busy singing a big gesund to notice that she has burned what food? She's singing a big gesund and at the end she says, oi! And then she goes to this food that she's been burning. Potato latkes. Uh, good guess, wonderful guess. Another lovely Jewish Michael, Chala. Chala. Says, oh, oi, baby, I say that. Can I get a oh. second guess? I was going to say that. <laughs> oh, well, better luck next time. You do indeed have another chance at a bonus. In 1961, Molly starred on Broadway in the Jerry Herman musical set in Israel that went by this delicious title. She was, in a broad she was in a Broadway musical that went by this delicious title. I have no idea. That's OK. That's the milk and honey. Oh. Oh. Milk and Honey, and I have the original album here on LP. But thank you, Debbie. Lovely knowing the Second Avenue Deli. That's what's important. Thank 10 you. 10 points to you. Thank you. Yes. On to another toss up. In her song, named for its central holiday, she sings, It's Shabuus, it's Shabuus, there is such excitement going through us. It's so much fun to be a Jewess. Go to temple and pray, it's Shavuos today. On Passover this year, she tweeted, I have to do two Passover seders and I can't find horseradish anywhere. Is that something else that people are hoarding? Hashtag hoard radish. For 10 points, name this funny lady who played Yente in the Volksbina's Yiddish language production of Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, looks to me like we've got 
Let's see. Yeah, we've got three person, three people to answer it correctly. So the first three to answer it correctly will indeed get it. And that is Dylan and Jordan and Dan Okotoshu. But the first was Dylan Cedars Hoffman. The first to get it was Dylan. So let's hear from Dylan. Some bonuses for Dylan. Hello, Dylan. Hello, can you hear me? I can, lovely to have you with us. Oh, glad to be here. Dylan out in Cleveland. Here are your bonuses on Jewish holidays and the Yiddish theater. Okay. The roots of Yiddish theater are commonly traced to plays written to be performed on this holiday. Purim. Purim, very good, Purim. Purim spielen. Five points to you for that. Mm -hmm. In a famous aria from Shulamis, the title character sings of her solitude with these words. Shabbos yontif un blank, davenich mir alein farzich. Sabbath festival and blank, I pray for myself all alone. She says the name of a holiday. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have forgotten to say the answer to the toss-up. I need to remember to do that. Um, <laughs> anyway, the toss-up was Dylan C. Uh, toss-up was not Dylan C. Just Hoffman. She won it. It was Jackie <laughs> Hoffman. Wait, that's funny. So many Hoffmans. I, maybe that's why I got confused. So many Hoffmans to contend with. Um, but Dylan, that was Jackie Hoffman who played Yentif. Dylan, what is this? Shabbos fest Yontif un blank davenich mir alein farzich. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm going to say Rosh Chodesh. Very good. Wait, oh, I'm not sure. That was perfect. Yeah, Shabbos Yontif un Rosh Chodesh davenich mir alein farzich. I pray alo all alone on these holidays. She's very lonely. Mm -hmm. um, her man has left her. In the film Mamale, Molly Pecan and the other ladies go out to serve dinner to the men, but do not sit amongst them while celebrating this holiday? Hmm. Serve dinner to the men, not sit amongst them. Um, uh, no idea. Rosh Hashanah? <laughs> it would be uh, not, not long after Rosh Hashanah, but it's sukkahs. sukkahs. Oh, sukkahs, okay. The men are sitting in a sukkah and the women go out and serve them. And of course, um, Molly gives the sort of nicest piece of duck or whatever it is to the guy she likes. Aww. Yes, but thanks for playing, Dylan. 10 points to you for uh, for that, uh, for all those bonuses you got. Woohoo! Lovely. And another 10 for the toss up. I'm, I'm receiving some standings. We might as well tell you some standings. Um, leaderboard Dylan is, is leading at 40 points, Jordan, 35 points, Beatrice at 20 points. So it's a tight race, and all of you are still in it. I guess so. Back to another toss up. Um, okay. The 1939 Yiddish language film adaptation of the Tevye stories was filmed on farmland in this state, as was the Yiddish film Yankel der Schmied, the singing blacksmith. For 10 points, name this state also the current home state of Folksbean Artistic Director Zalman Mlotek and the birthplace of Folksbean Associate Artistic Director Motel Didner. So Beatrice was the first to answer correctly with New Jersey. So let's have Beatrice join us. It looks like Dylan's mic is still on. So if we could uh, unmute, uh, mute Dylan and unmute Beatrice so that Beatrice can get these questions. New Jersey was the correct answer, New Jersey. Tevye, the movie, it's making out as if it's filmed in, you know, countryside of Eastern Europe, but it's in fact in uh, New Jersey. Hello, Brocha. Hey. Are you ready for your bonuses? Great. Okay, name the native cities or towns of these people associated with the Yiddish theater. The classic Yiddish writer, author of the play By Nacht auf Nalten Mark, At Night in the Old Marketplace. Zamosch. Zamosh, so that's Ayel Peretz, who is from Zamosh. Very good. Wonderfully comic Yiddish theater actor and star of TV's Boston Public, Faiva Schwinkel. Um, New York. New York, yeah, that's right. Brownville, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, but that's good enough, New York. And your final bonus, Schiffer Lehrer, who died in 2011 at the age of 95 and was age five when she was discovered by Boris Tomaszewski and then began her career on the Yiddish stage in what city? Um, 
Chiffre letter. Um, Varsha. No, she's actually from Buenos Aires. Ah. Huh. Buenos Aires, but very good. Oh, this is a uh, thank you, Broche. Just received an interesting message that um, she is Debbie Berman. We heard from her a few toss-ups ago about Jewish food, but she was uh, she is um, she put a letter of cousin. She's telling us so. What a source for all of us to have Shifra Letter's cousin among us right now. Very good. Toss up number six. There will be 15 toss ups, by the way. In the pastoral Roman romance, Greenefelder, Greenfields, the farmer's daughter, Stira, kisses a farmer's son, whose second given name is also a word for this animal. The Yiddish actor Yitzhak Levy who was friends with Franz Kafka, made his debut acting in a Yiddish translation of Chekhov's one actor, Medved, Russian for the same animal. For 10 points, name this large mammal for which the constellation Ursa Major is named. Okay, so we've, we've got three correct answers. Uh, so the three of you who answered correctly first will be getting uh, points. But the one who got it first, which is Bear, Bear was the correct answer. Uh, Hersh Bear was that character in Greenefelder I was talking about, Hersh Bear. Bear means the same thing in Yiddish as it does in English. Anyway, Broche was the first to get that right. So let's hear from Broche yet again. Broche cleaning up. Broche, AKA Beatrice. Um, for those who don't know Broche's many names. Um, hello, Broche. Hello, good enough. Good nothing, a good job. For five points each, name these Yiddish theater animals. At comedian Gigan and Schumacher's last performance at Warsaw's satirical Yiddish theater in 1939, shortly before the Nazis invaded Poland, Schumacher addressed what creature he saw in front of him with these words, believe me, I envy you. You can fly freely wherever and whenever you want. Uh, bird? It wasn't a bird, it's was actually a fly. Blade me a flea, ich bin dir mechanic, du kannst frei fliehen, wohin du willst und wenn du willst. Sort of a tragic comic speech there. Actor Jacob Adler was known as the great what of the Yiddish theater. Hmm. Um, lion. Now he's known as the great eagle, Hanesher um, Hagodl. Oh, Adler, Adler is on, yeah, Adler is on a... Exactly right. Uh, so that's why he was called that. In addition to his fierceness and his, you know, strength on the stage and everything, his last name in fact means eagle. Uh, Adler, Adler, eagle. So the eponymous character of a play based on a novel by I.J. Singer receives an epithet meaning the name of this animal because he appears to the townsfolk to be, like that creature, silent and half-witted. Um, hmm. uh, yeah, um, yeah. What's your answer? Okay, it's okay that you don't know. The answer is a calf. He's called Yosha Kalb. Oh, um, after the novel by I.J. Singer. So thank you. You picked up one, one, no, you didn't pick up any bonuses. Sorry, they were fly, fly eagle, and calf, but you did get the toss up, and we love you for that. Back to another toss up. This one's a picture clue. So hold on as I get that ready. For 10 points, I'm going to ask you what character is being portrayed in this publicity shot from a Yiddish play. So let me rig that up for you. Um, I'll show you for a second and then maybe I'll quit because I think when it's up, you might not be able to see your chat as well. Although people are answering, so I guess you can't see the chat. Um, looks like we've gotten quite a few correct answers. So I'm gonna stop that share. That was in fact the golem. Um, that was the golem, uh, an unusual costume for that man made of clay, but so it goes. Jordan was the first to answer that correctly, Jordan Corbin. So let's bring Jordan in. 
Shalom Aleichem. Aleichem Shalom. I'm um, just seeing who were the first three, um, just because it might be fun to know who got points for that. Jordan, you were the first, of course, Jordan and Corbin, then Alicia Maras, sorry if I'm not saying that right, and um, Jack Newman also got points because they were the, you were among the first three to get that, the golem from the play by Kate. These are um, three more shots, publicity shots of actors in roles on the Yiddish stage. I'm gonna ask you what character is being portrayed in these pictures. So here we go. Picture round, kids. Um, who is that? Who is being portrayed? Shown in two different productions, portrayed by different actresses. Mirala Efros. Mirala Efros is correct. Very good. On the left is Esther Ochel Kaminska, uh, the mama of Yiddish theater. And that's actually her, her daughter, Ida Kaminska, who's playing Mirala's grandson, Shloimele. And then on the right is Kenny Lipson in a production in New York in 1898. All right, next question. Here's Michal Michalesko and Josef Kessler, both playing this character in Yiddish productions of a play not originally in Yiddish. By the way, all these pictures are drawn from the Album von Yiddischen Theater, a wonderful album of the Yiddish theater, which you can find on the website of the Yiddish Book Center. Hamlet. You do you do know it is Hamlet. Um, so very good. Picking up uh, two bonuses. Now for the third. Neuch Nachbush as this spooky character in Anski's Dibbik. Uh, the Messenger. Very good, The Messenger, Dermashule. Wonderful, all three <laughs> bonuses. Um, lots of knishes and kechelech for you. Um, I hope you are enjoying because you deserve them. Um, let's get back. To... All right, now another toss up. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, it was Michal Michalesko. Somebody is asking, was that Michal Michalovich? I think it was Michal Michalesko. Anyway, um, all kinds of Michals. So, the 11 minute Yiddish film from 1931, Achazen af Probe, depicts a series of cantors singing at what kind of event? This is the process by which actors and singers display their talent before a panel for the purpose of acquiring a job. Uh, very good. We're getting some right answers. Looks like Jordan was the first to get it, and then a couple others, but the answer is, yeah, looks like Dylan and Alicia were the other two to get it. It is audition. It's an audition. It's Cantor's auditioning for a job with a committee uh, from a synagogue. That's an audition. So Jordan, um, Jordan and Corbin, welcome back. Sit down. For five points each, name these Yiddish-speaking cantors captured on film. All right. The star of that Yiddish short, a Chazanach Probe, was this great of cantorial music. Uh, Moishe Escher? No, that's Louis Labele Waldman. Waldman. Uh, what legendary Chazan has a cameo singing the Kaddish in the 1927 film, The Jazz Singer, celebrated as the first talkie. I'm just gonna say Moishe Lesher for all of these. <laughs> um, that's incorrect, it's Yossele Rosenblatt. Yossele Rosenblatt. <laughs> Third bonus, art was imitating life for this actor singer descended from many generations of Chazonim, himself playing a cantor's son in the Yiddish musical, The Cantor's Son. Them chazen I don't know. Do you want to guess? I'm going to guess Moishe Oisher, of course. Okay, now it's worked for you. Of course you should guess. Have to be one of the three. sein eine. von den drei. Yes, it had to be one of the three. So uh, good strategy there. It worked for you in the end. Um, goodbye for now.
we've had eight questions. We're, have, we're having seven more. Um, so in this little interlude, I thought I'd sing you a song. We're, we're having so many questions um, that I thought I'd sing you a song about questions. This is not a question. This is just a song. This is just entertainment in the interlude. Um, and then we'll get back with seven more toss-ups and lots of bonuses. So this is a um, ch Hasidic folk song called Freik die Welt an alte Kasche. Halftime show, yes indeed. Um, Freik die Welt an alte Kasche. The world asks an old question. The world asks an ancient question. And sort of a, a philosophical kind of song. Honestly, I'm not totally sure what it means. I think it's up to you to decide what it means to you. But here it is, we're, we're having it because we have questions tonight. And the, this, is, um, this is a song about questions. I have, I have the subtitles here, or super titles, or maybe they're the to, to the side of me. I really don't know. Let's see. OK. <clears throat> Feel free to go out of the room and you know get a snack. This is just the singing portion. Tradirom, so that's the Altikasha, the old question that the world sings. Now let's get back to some old questions that Michal sings, that Michal says, and they're not old, but they are questions. They are not Altikashas, but they are Kashas from this week. By the way, I had a dog named Kasha growing up. She was a Samoya dog, uh, which is a big white fluffy dog, and we called her Kasha. I think sort of after the, the you know the Jewish dish buckwheat groats, but you know it turns out Kasha is also the word for a question in Yiddish. Um. Okay, so some nice words from you all. Um, now let's hear the standings before we get into our second half of questions. The standings are Jordan and Corbin with 75 points, Dylan Cedars Hoffman with 50 points, Beatrice Brocha Lang with 50 points, tied for third. Those are the top three as it stands now, but all of you are still in it and we're so happy you're all here. Let's get back to it, shall we? All right, question number nine, toss up number nine. Type your answer in the chat, one answer per party. This writer spoke the following words to a waiting audience. Once Yiddish has taken hold of you and moved you, you will have forgotten your former reserve. Then you will come to feel the true unity of Yiddish and so strongly that it will frighten you, yet it will no longer be fear of Yiddish, but of yourselves. When he introduced a Yiddish theatrical recital he had organized, a fan of Yiddish theater, but not a Yiddish writer himself, he would later write such famous German language novels as The Trial and The Metamorphosis, Die Verwandlung. Righto, so of course we're getting a lot of right answers as soon as I told you the names of his novels. Um, that's Franz Kafka. But the first answer was uh, Jordan. 
Jordan Porch and Corbin Allardyce. So let's bring Jordan back in. Um, you got that very quickly. How did you know that? Ich bin Takahobika Shagoya auf Kafka und Yiddish. Okay, so uh, Corbin is very interested in Kafka and Yiddish, and these two interests converge so that he was able to answer this question basically immediately. So <laughs> um, it's the truth. Oh, tell me more about the Yiddish theater recital introduced by Kafka that night. For five points each, what year did this event take place? As long as you are within 10 years before or after, I will give you the point. 1912? Point. Oh my God, that's exactly it. What's what's no, happening? Place. Okay. Um, a maven. Das heißt a maven. Okay. The location was the Jewish town hall of what city, then part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire? Prague. Prague. Yes. It was the Jewish town hall of Prague. Very good. And who was performing? Um, Jacques Levy. Yitzhak oh Jacques God. Levy. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Very, very good. Um, all three bonuses to you for your expert knowledge of Kafka and Yiddish. And particularly this, this one evening that happened in 1912. Um, it's almost as if you were there. Were you there? I don't know. You couldn't have been, you're not that old, but you know, maybe spiritually you were there. All right, prior life. Another toss up folks. After touring in this city, the actor Maurice Schwartz said, if you can find an enthused theater crowd 6,000 miles from New York, it means that Yiddish theater still has a future. For 10 points, name this city, home to the theater known as the IFT, the Yiddisher Volkstheater, and one of the birthplaces of tango. So... Let's get those answers in. All right, so we've got three, we've got three right answers. And the first, it looks like um, my fellow moderators will confirm is, is, all right, it was Jordan once again. So Jordan and Corbin, come back in. I feel like I've talked to you before. Um, you're becoming very familiar voices in this broadcast. <laughs> no, there's no reason to be sorry. Um, <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, and by the way, the other two to answer who will also be getting 10 points for that toss up are Debbie and Beatrice. Here are your bonuses related to Yiddish theater in Buenos Aires. Um, this famed Yiddish actor, whose last name means in Hebrew, a son of my people, appeared in the Spanish language Argentine film Esperanza, Hope, as a Jewish gaucho. Ben Am? Uh, sorry, sorry, say it again. Ben Am? Um, I can't give it to you, it's Ben Ami. Oh yes, um, of course, the famous person. <laughs> uh, the, the answer was Buenos Aires. The answer was Buenos Aires. In <laughs> case I didn't tell you, of course, that's the birthplace of tango and a home of many um, Yiddish-speaking Jews and a lot of Yiddish theater. Um, all right. Just because it's fun, I might show you the poster for that movie that this Yiddish theater actor did in Buenos Aires because it's wild to see. Um, anyway, here it is. There's Jacob Benami appearing in Esperanza. There he is um, as a gaucho, as a Jewish gaucho. Anyway. The first time the Argentine public saw this play, it was in a Yiddish translation written by Joseph Buloff and performed at Buenos Aires' Soleil Theater in 1949. Death of a Salesman? Oh, yes, indeed. Teut von a Salesman. Um, Teut von a Salesman, more recently seen here in New York City, uh, here in New York City, uh, <laughs> but um, originally performed actually in Yiddish in Buenos Aires, and that was the first time Argentina had seen that play, was in Yiddish. Last bonus, this Yiddish actress appears on the poster here, advertising a performance she was to give at the Argentine Yiddish theater called Teatro Excelsior. So let's show you that poster. And I'm asking who is, who is advertised in this Argentine Yiddish theater poster? Your answer.
answer, please? No idea. <laughs> uh, it's Molly Pecan. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, it's Molly Pecan. There she is, Molly Pecan. Ay, que muchacha. Hoy es das amedo. Oh, what a girl this is. Um, very good. On to another toss up. I can assure you there's no fix. There was some, uh, some whisperings in the chat about a fix, but there's no such thing going on. Um, you know, we just, a lot of people know a lot of stuff uh, and that's wonderful. And we're glad to have a lot of wonderful interested people here. All right, next toss up. Having grown up on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, this actor's first job in showbiz was working a concession stand in the Yiddish Theater District, where he would later play some bit parts as a child actor. Much later, he would, work, he would earn an Oscar nomination for playing opposite another New York-born son of Eastern European Jewish immigrants, George Burns, in the film adaptation of Neil Simon's The Sunshine Boys. So far, we haven't actually gotten any correct answers. We just got a correct answer, but let's see if a couple others know it too. Yes, so now we've gotten a few correct answers. Um, and the first was from David Simon, a new, a new voice, so that's fun. So let's hear from David Simon. Hello, David. Uh, your mic not, might not be on, David Simon. Unmute, unmute, hello. Now I can hear you. Okay. Hello. Hello, David. Are you having fun? Uh, yes, it's great. I don't know oh, many good. answers, but this you one. Did I know you, you got that one. You were lightning quick with that one. Um, uh, so here for five points each, name these actors chiefly known. Uh, sorry, I keep on forgetting to say the correct answer, but thank you all for reminding me. <laughs> the answer, you can give it, David Simon. Who is the correct answer for that? Walter Matthau. Walter Matthau was the right answer. I have to remember to do that. Anyway, very good. For five points, name these actors chiefly known for their work in mainstream theater and Hollywood, but who performed in Yiddish theater early in their careers. The daughter of a famous Yiddish actor mentioned earlier in this quiz, she would later found an influential school and method of acting that counted Marlon Brando among its students. Um, method actor, Steiglitz? I don't know, Steig, no. Not Stein, but Steins. No, I don't know. If, if, uh, that'd be, be Stella Adler. She's Stella the daughter Adler. of Jacob Adler, who was mentioned uh, earlier in the quiz. Okay. Um, after emigrating from Lemberg, now in Western Ukraine, he played to great acclaim in Maurice Schwartz's Yiddish art theater, appearing in up to 30 roles a season. One of his most famous roles, however, was as Scarface in the 1932 English language movie of that name. George Raft? That's Paul Mooney. Oh. God. Paul Mooney, born Friedrich Weisenfreund. Um, anyway, one more. This actor performed with Michal Michalesko when that star of the Yiddish stage visited Los Angeles and cast him in a three performance run of Die Freilich Kapzonim, The Jolly Paupers. He would later incorporate a traditional Jewish gesture into the performance of his most famous role. Efficiency, that that last that last line really kind of tells you the first is very obscure, but that last line later incorporated a famous Jewish gesture into his performance of his most famous role. Do you have a guess? I have no idea. I have no uh, idea. It's uh, it's Leonard Nimoy. Oh, oh, yeah. You know, he did oh. uh, this the yes. Kohanic yes. uh, Duchening sort of sign. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yes, thank you for playing, David. Thank, thank you for you. playing. Um, <laughs> glad to have you here. And um, the person who, 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 who's, who made the accusation about the fix, we're glad to hear from her now that she was just kidding about the fix, um, yeah. which I know you were, of course. But uh, anyway, no fixes here. It's fair and square. Great Yiddish theater quiz. Um, all right. Thank you, David. We can uh, take you off for now. And this is a, an audio round. Um, yes, we do. We love, we love your sense of humor, Laura. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, anyway, this is an audio round. I'm going to be playing you uh, 
an audio excerpt of a song of a, of an act as a, you know, music. And you tell me who's singing. That's all I want to know. Who's singing in this song? And I'm going to go to my gramophone now um, to play it. Real, real life gramophone, which you aren't able to see, but it's. Okay, we're getting lots of correct answers, so I'll stop dancing. And I'll turn it off. That's the Barry sisters, the Barry sisters, um, not the Andrew sisters. We're getting some good guesses of Andrew sisters. They also you know, sang in that kind of style. And they sang a famous Yiddish theater song too by Mir Bistu Shane, as the Berry Sisters did. But that, that was the Berry Sisters. Let's show you, um, just show you, because it's a bit of fun, the album that was playing, um, it's disappearing into the Brooklyn Bridge. But anyway, um, Berry Sisters. Uh, the first to get it was Dylan Cedars Hoffman. So let's get Dylan back in. Dylan. Hi. Hello. Congratulations on knowing the Berry Sisters. Oh, thank you. I love them. Yes, we love them here too. Um, very good. For five points each, name these facts related to that recording and the Berry Sisters. That song's melody, and the song was in my Eugen Bisti Shane, in my eyes, you're beautiful. That song's melody was written by what Yiddish theater composer who also wrote the music to Die Goldene Kalle, lately revived by the Volksbühne? Oh, hmm. I don't know who wrote Goldene Kalle. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Ich weiß nicht. That's uh, Joseph Rumshinsky. Joseph Rumshinsky. Mm -hmm. The Berry sisters were first known as the What Sisters, their original surname. Um, well, I'm guessing it's a Jewish surname. Yeah, you'd be right about that. You'd okay, right that's good. That's good. Uh, um, let's say Friedman. No, it's even more Jewish. It's Bagelman. Really? Oh, wow. Uh, that's, that's real facts. And um, <laughs> yeah. All right. The Berry sisters hailed from this borough of New York City, also the birthplace of Jennifer Lopez. Um, the Bronx? The Bronx, very good. So you got that bonus in the end, it's the Bronx. Don't be fooled by the rocks that they got. They're just Myrna and Claire Bagelman from the block. Um, just like Jenny. Um, another toss up. Nicely done, Dylan. This is toss up number 13 with 15 toss ups. Y'all ready? Let's go. This man's scenic designs, according to one critic, beguiled the eye and enhanced the drama with their rhythmic indications. Born the son of a rabbi in Kiev, he got his start designing for the Yiddish theater, but eventually became a big name on Broadway, creating the sets for the original productions of such shows as Cabaret, Company, and Fiddler on the Roof, and winning the Tony Award for scenic design six times. His surname might make you think that he was a child of Moses's elder brother. Um, very good. Yes, it's it's a uh, it's Boris Aronson. So Jordan was the first to answer correctly. Jordan was the first to answer with uh, Aronson, and that's the correct answer. It's Boris Aronson. Unfortunately, we can't give it to the person who came in before and just said Boris, because I did ask for people's last names. But it's uh, Boris Aronson. Looks like um, among those who picked up points for that, though, is Nassim Zamansky, Natan Zamansky, who was formerly my Yiddish student at the University of Michigan. So that's nice to see. Nice to have you here, Natan. Um, hello, Jordan and Corbin. Hey. Hello. <laughs> all right. So we all know, I mean, we all know, um, especially us, that Boris Aronson design sets for Fiddler on the Roof, the original production of Fiddler on the Roof. Your bonuses are on the topic of Fiddler on the Roof and the stories upon which it is based. For five points each, 
tell me these things. In the stories by Shalom Aleichem, the titular dairyman has seven daughters, though the musical only names five. Who is the one daughter that does not appear in Fiddler that Shalom Aleichem does give a name to? Sprinze? No, Sprinze is Wait, in Fiddler. No, I the fuck. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry. Sprinze is in Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, it's Taibale. Yes. Taibale is the correct That's answer. <laughs> um, little Dove. This is the actor who played Tevye in the 1939 film adaptation of the stories called Tevye. Mora Schwartz? Uh-huh, Marty Schwartz um, is correct. Very good. I uh, founded the Yiddish Art Theater in New York City. Um, you're, this is just, you're gonna know this one. I just know it, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. <laughs> I'll just tell the rest of you so you all know Jordan, uh, worked uh, sound on the Volksbühne production of Fiddler on the Roof uh, in Yiddish, and Corbin ran super titles, and um, I acted in it. So that, that's how uh, we all joined up as pals. Uh, but anyway, in the original Yiddish translation of the show, which can be heard in recordings of the Israeli cast, the first song, Tradition, is translated not Traditia, as we sing it in the Volksbühne production, but rather what? Di Toire. Di Toire, of course. Wait, why did it take you so long? Because I wanted Jordan to say it and she refused. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it was very obvious. You were all there. We all heard it. <laughs> um, thank you, Jordan and Corbin. Yeah, so it was originally translated Di Toire, Di Toire, uh, the Torah. And then it was, uh, we started off rehearsing it that way and then eventually it was, it was switched. Actually, at the advice of Sheldon Harnick, the original lyricist, he came to the show and said, I want to hear something that's closer to what I wrote. So that was sort of a beautiful thing to have the input of one of the original lyricists of Fiddler on our production. So we changed it to Traditie, 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 which is closer to tradition. Um, all right. Here's another picture round for everyone. This is a toss up. For 10 points, name the play being advertised in this poster. The play was written in 1900. So I'm going to show you a poster. You tell me what play was being advertised. I've blocked out the title. Um, this is the play. This is the poster. What play is being advertised there? It's a hard one. This is a toughie. But it's written by in, in 1900. There might not even be three people who pick it up. We'll see. But let's see if, he, if, if anyone picks it up. Um, no problem if you don't. It's all about having fun, you know? And I'm having fun. Um, and I hope you are. So I'm going to stop the share so I can get back to seeing let's get some guesses let's get some guesses we haven't even had many guesses so let's at least get some guesses uh so far nobody's gotten it if you've guessed once don't guess again but if you haven't guessed then guess all right if nobody gets it and only um all right all right um. Jack Newman is very close, but I, I can't give it to, to Jack. Maybe, tell me, give it to Jack. Jack, you're the closest, you're the closest, so I'm gonna give it to you. Um, Jack told us, Gott Teivel, and it's Gott Mensch und Teivel, God, man, and devil, as it's normally typically translated. So let's have Jack Newman on. You were missing the middle word, but you were the closest. Um, <laughs> you were much closer than anyone else. No one got close. So uh, good job, Jack. Thank you. I get no oh. from Toronto. I get no to get your. Why did you forget about Mensch? <laughs> you know, I was typing quickly, which I'm not a good typer. <laughs> I tried to get as many clue words as I could. We feel you, we feel you. That's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that someone was, ring was able to ring in. Um, with a nearly their answer. So uh, for these bonuses, you're going to get three more Yiddish theater posters. Tell me the, the show that's being advertised in the poster, just like in the toss up. So let's see, am I sharing the screen? Let's share this screen. 
Um, all right, what play is being advertised here, Jack Newman? Yiddish. Uh, wow, that's a good the title one. doesn't appear there. I hmm. blocked it out. You know what? I this is a a frage kasha for me. I weiß gar nicht du was is efsches is um zag zwei gentlemen from Verona. That's a good guess. That's a good guess. The two gentlemen of Verona. You it, the two is in fact in the title of the play that I'm looking for, but it's the two kuni lemos. It's fake kuni lemos. Ah. Um, but quite a good guess. Uh, here's another. Hmm. Oh, uh, Awake and Sing. Very good, very good. Awake and Sing being done in Yiddish. Vach, uf, und sing. Very nice. Uh, Clifford Odette's play. And your third bonus, let's see if you can get this one. Yiddish folk, uh, Jacob Benami's Livish. Oh, wow. Revolution. Was for a revolution is this? The Polish Revel, you know. Uh, Oh, <laughs> it's a frage for me. Joseph Green. Hmm. Um, that is Hey Levick's The Miracle in the Warsaw Ghetto, The yes. Nest in Ghetto. Very good. I shine him down. That was Thanks fun. Playing, Thank Jack. you. Thank you. All right. We're, we're down to our 15th toss up. Um, 15th and last toss up. So um, getting getting to the end. Let's hear it for the last toss up. <clears throat> Discussing a play that she wrote, this person said, Yiddish is above all a language of yearning, a language of anxiety. That explains a lot, I add. Um, I believe we've worked hard to communicate that love to audiences. We've had productions in Omaha, Nebraska, and in Boise, Idaho, where Yiddish has rarely been spoken. Audiences there have said they feel the emotion we are trying to convey. For 10 points, name this author of a play that played on Broadway in 2017 about the creation of a Yiddish play by Shalom Ash, which was subjected to an obscenity trial. Very nice. So we've had a few correct answers. Uh, the first three to buzz in correctly were Jordan, Natan, and Dylan. And that's uh, Paula Vogel. So Jordan, you were the first answer correctly, Jordan Corbin. So let's, Jordan Corbin. Hello. Hey. Mazel tov on knowing about, uh, did you see Indecent? Yes. Yes. Motel Diedner was there the night I saw it by pure coincidence. A meeting, a meeting of stars, you might say. <laughs> um, your five point bonuses will be on that original play by Ash about which Fogel's Indecent, Vogel's Indecent was based. What was the title of that play by Shalom Ash? God, it, hmm? please go. God for Nekome? God for Nekome, God of Vengeance, very good. A famous kiss between two women in that play takes place under what weather conditions? The same conditions for the kiss were rep reproduced on stage in Indecent. Rain. Rain, it's raining. Um, two ladies out in the rain having a kiss. Um, one of the women involved in that kiss is Manke. Who is the other woman? Rivkele. Rivkele, Rivkele, very good. <laughs> um, I didn't even have to read you the end of the question. Um, I was going to get there, but it was like the answer to the very first question in this quiz. Her name is also a version of the name of a biblical matriarch. So like Leia, first answer, now we come full circle. Here we get a rifke. Um, thank you very much. And we might as well have you stay, uh, Jordan and Corbin, because we have some good, good news for you at the end of our game here. Um, Looks like, okay, we've gotten the final tally of scores. First place is Jordan Porch and Corbin Allardyce. So, lovely job. That's uh, my keyboard making the sound of applause. Um, very nice, you quest. 
requested song from Zalman Mlotek. Second place, Dylan Cedars Hoffman. Dylan Cedars Hoffman, you won a cameo in 15 minute Yiddish uh, presented by Matul Didner. Very nice. And third place is Beatrice Brochelang. Um, Brooke Lang, you win uh, the album of Fiddler Off and Da. Fiddler Off and Da, Tony Brown, Steve Ross, Gia Pache, Sabina Bruckner, Michael Costa, Jamie Beth Margolis, and uh, lots of others for helping me put this on. And um, tbrown at mitf.org uh, is Tony's email. So reach out to him for your prizes. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to wish you all a gute Nacht and remind you that all the world is one great big questions, um, one great big question. So go out and find some answers. Those are my closing words to you. Um, Sweet dreams.